Welcome back to the Sunday Footy Show and for Collingwood fans, not exactly the start to the season that you were anticipating, but if you're a Giants fan and there's plenty out there at the moment and the army is growing, wow, you'd be happy. That's how it happened, TJ. It was a statement performance from the Giants. I just thought the pressure around the ball and the speed which they came at Collingwood to force them into turnovers and score from them. Also really strong from the midfield and their forwards had a field day and one of those forwards is our next guest, Brent Daniels, one of the best small forwards in the game. He dined out, he joins us. Brent, thanks so much for your time. No worries. Thanks for having me, man. It, the, the overriding emotion is probably relief to get that one ticked off. There was a, a lot of by-play in the lead-up to that. Um, the players didn't really get involved in it. But how are you feeling this morning? You would have been wrapped with that performance. Yeah, it's always nice to uh, start the season out with a win. Um, you know, we knew Collingwood are probably going to be the benchmark this year. So um, to come out with a strong performance against them was, uh, yeah, it was really strong. And as I said, just a great way to get the season started. And... Um, yeah, it was a pretty complete performance. Brent, can I just ask you, uh, Kane said there that you probably don't get caught up in the, the uh, trash talking, if you like, from your CEO, Dave Matthews, when he was talking about the hatred that you have for Collingwood. But was, was there a bit there? I'm not going to go so far as to say hatred, but is there a bit there now? Yeah, oh, well, yeah Dave's comments definitely caught me by surprise. Um, <laughs> I didn't think we hated them at, at that stage. But so I, I guess losing to, to them in a prelim final by a point, there's always going to be... You know, a bit of feeling in it. Um, you know, it, it was really, I guess, tough time for us. Um, it hurt a lot of us because we thought we were a real good chance to go on and win, win it. So uh, I guess, you know, losing to a side in a prelim by a point always adds that extra little bit of feeling. But, um, yeah, the hate comments might be a little bit too far. How uh, focused were you on your ball movement? You kicked two kicking goals early and three from the back half. So once you broke the first line of sort of their zone from your defensive 50 and you got through, it led to some easy scores. But it's not easy to be bold and take risks with your ball movement. Yeah, I think it's been a big focus for us over the preseason is we want to move the ball a lot faster, um, take contests when we can ahead of the ball because we think we've got a really dynamic forward line. So... Um, I guess the way we set the ground up and the, and the way we move the ball and, you know, I've got some elite running defenders and some really explosive midfielders as well that can, you know, really paint the fence and um, open up opposition defence. So um, I think, yeah, it's been a massive, um, I guess, improvement now for us. Um, you there, mate? Yeah, sorry. Let's get the phone call. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, don't, don't let us interrupt, mate. You just uh, take the call there. Nah, Dave right. Matthews, probably, is it? We have a long one. I'm back. I'm back with you. Hey, Brent, sorry yeah, about that. All good. Uh, you're 22 disposals and four goals for you. So I want to ask you about your role. Like, how much can you play on instinct? Because you got up quite high and got involved, you know, even in the back half of the ground, then just worked hard forward as well. Like, do you have a licence to get up as high as you want or it's pretty structured with what Kingsley wants? Um... A lot of my role is just covering the corridor um, because I guess the best teams always want to utilise the corridor. So uh, my role is a lot of time at long down the line stoppages and things like that is to cover the corridor and ensure that, you know, they can't come back through there. But once we win the ball, um, I've got the licence to really rip forward and try and get dangerous ahead of the ball. Um, you know, a lot of time I play on, you know, the really dynamic and, um, I guess, aggressive halfbacks in the league. So um, I think that they give you a really, a really good lick at it. At it if if you play roll well, um, sometimes they get away away with the ball. But um, if I can hold my shape, uh, corridor, usually I get a really good look going the other way because uh, sometimes they get caught up uh, skinny skinny side. And as a team, we don't mind mind a side going through a skinny because we we back our defence into to turn that ball over and then um, take it out the other side of the ground, which we did really well last night. Yeah, absolutely did. You played with a really fast way through the midfield and without Toby Green having a great influence, you kicked 18 goals against the reigning Premiers and the spread of goal kickers, including yourself, was impressive. Yeah, I think it's um, really important that we don't just rely on Toby. Um, we, we know he's an absolutely fabulous player, but um, you know, a lot of time last year I felt like you know it was either he kicked five or five goals or, or, or we couldn't win. So it was good to see Brownie hit the scoreboard. Um, you know, he's, he's come a long, a long way. Um, he's still learning the game, which is um, pretty scary. But um, yeah, it was great. King has, King has mentioned that after the game, um, we didn't, didn't rely on one person, which is um, always nice. And I think going forward, it's going to be really, really big for us. And hopefully we can continue to do that. 
Brent, a lot of the focus on the lead into the game was uh, derived by Mason Cox of calling with the comments he made about the actual stadium itself and the response by your club uh, in the uh, promotion of the game uh, around an animal pen. And then he got himself involved in a pre-match issue with uh, Shane Mumford, the ruck coach there at the Giants. Was that a big deal for you and others at the at the time? Oh, not really. I guess Mason likes to say things that might get a bit of a headline. You know, he likes the limelight, but. Um, what he did before the game, I thought was really bizarre. Um, bit of carrying, I thought. Um, you know, I'd like to think that we're really humble and hungry as a team, and um, to see that, it, 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 yeah, it wasn't a good look. I didn't think, and um, you know, if you're going to do that, you'd, you'd want to back it up on the field. And um, you know, we didn't didn't read too much into it, but um, you know, his comments, you know, they they grab media, and he, that's what he wants. So um, we didn't read into it too much, but. You know, we've got. We know we're a small, small base, but um, we really love our Giants fans. We got 21,000 people there yesterday, which is really, really special for us. With um, the amount of times we've played in front of three or four thousand at that stadium, it's um, yeah, yesterday was really special. And you know, it's not big, and I know a lot of the Melbourne clubs probably look at that and go, "Geez, like we get that every week," but it was really special for us. We saw the way Shane Mumford reacted, and, and, and he could have reacted a number of ways. He chose a, a calm way. Did you talk about it once you, you broke up from that before the game started? No, I, I didn't see it until after the game. Um, luckily, Mummy, he doesn't usually hold back, so luckily he did this time. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't see it. I saw it after the game and just thought it was a little bit bizarre. And, um, yeah, I'm not sure what he was thinking, to be honest. Can, can you come on every week, Brent? Uh, yeah. I think I've got a new favourite player in the <laughs> AFL. Let's look at the votes, TJ. And our um, guest is very unlucky not to be in there. But I thought Tom Green with his nine clearances, high score involvements. Hogan's second quarter, he really put the foot down and was huge. Callum Brown kicked uh, five goals, four in the first half. And Canelio continuing on with his really strong form from last year. But a very even performance. They could have had a lot of representation. Let's look at the breast prize pack in football. For you, we'll start again in 2024. The J Lab, one pair of mini J Buds, thanks to J Lab. Their true wireless and pack over five hours of playtime. Clutch and Co., you'll be best dressed on the golf course with a quarter zip top and pants from Clutch and Co. A Callaway, a box of chrome tour golf balls and a cap, thanks to our great mates at Callaway. Travis Matthews, another two hats for your playing group, thanks to Travis Matthews. True Linkswear, true Linkswear have your swing sorted with the golf shoes that are so good you may want to wear them everywhere. Check them out at truelinkswear.oz. New Zealand, Be it, uh, Bar Fridges Australia are mm. back. Enjoy a custom designed bar fridge to keep your drinks cool with your name on it. The Aquilas are also back, been looking after us for ages. Quality footwear since 1958. Cookie Box, Melbourne's finest cookie shop. Treat yourself to a special delivery thanks to Cookie Box. Platform 28, TJ loves his free drinks. Water. The best mm. pub in Docklands, the Rick's Eyewear. Eyewear that inspires confidence, especially the Soho Cherries. Check them out at rickseyewear.com.au. And Gumbaya World, where water slides, thrill rides and wildlife collide. Oh, it's good out there. Limited access with a family pass, thanks to the team at Gumbaya World. What a prospect. we get a family pass? We'll get yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Nice. That is fantastic. What a prospect. That's a great prospect. That is good. Hey, good on you, Brent. What are you up to for the rest of the day? Uh, not too much. My parents are up uh, from Victoria, so I'll spend a bit of time with them. Um, don't get to see them a whole lot, so um, just chill out, recover well, get in the water, and um, yeah, on to next week. What part of Victoria are you from? I'm um, from Country Vic and Swan Hill. Um, so it's a, in the middle of nowhere, really, but um, yeah, it's a good little town. Oh, absolutely it is. It's around uh, Robin Bale Way, Carl Dittrich Territory. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Damo. <laughs> all right, good on you, Brent. Good to talk to you, mate. And uh, all the best for the remainder of the season, including next week against North Melbourne. Thank you, mate. Appreciate that. All right, thank you. Brent Daniels joining us there. Um, ooh, doesn't hold back. He didn't. Uh, and I'll be interested to see whether... Would Mason get a please explain for that to... Oh, I wouldn't have thought was so, it the, Was it the ball? It was provocative. But why not? Why was not? it the ball thrown up by it the was, Giants? It was provocative. I, I don't think we need to get a please explain on it. I think that's just between him and that club. And... Again, to your point, if he had got a kick in the first half, we wouldn't be talking about that. I don't think Craig McRae would have loved it, though, would he? No, well, he didn't love certain no. behaviours of certain people, and we saw what happened there. I, the I, I, reckon, I reckon that would warrant a please explain. From the AFL? Absol mate, that, that, it, as um, Brent said there, Mummy doesn't normally hold back. And if he had have reacted mm. in a demonstrative manner, along with, I think, Cornelio might have been there as well. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm the one who's pushing back on this, but normally you would think I'll be the one driving it. But I, I, I don't see a, a need for the AFL to get involved. Mm. In well, it. if the AFL doesn't get involved, as someone said, I'm sure Craig McRae might just... Yeah, well, that's it. another issue. Yeah. yeah.